We live in a world that claims to be predicated upon scientific reality, but they always make an exception where science supports the teaching of the Judeo-Christian scriptures. Somehow, normal scientific methodology and rationale become suspended. This is true in a number of areas. Certainly it's true of the subject of creationism versus Darwinism. But it's no less true on the subject of non-therapeutic abortion, abortus provocatus. Let's understand certain undeniable realities that are being drowned out. When anyone simply states these scientific facts, they're accused of being anti-women or anti-choice. They simply make the word choice a euphemism for death, which you can only do by ignoring the scientific realities embryologically and also obstetrically. Human fetuses are surviving earlier and earlier in gestation. The kinds of technology now used in incubators, which are highly digitalized, can almost synthesize the antenatal fetal environment. We have babies surviving 17 lunar weeks. 17 out of 40 lunar weeks. We also have a situation where there's increased progress in antenatal laparoscopic surgery, correction of congenital birth defects before the fetus is even born, and we've gone way beyond amniocentotic diagnosis with genetic medicine, identifying birth defects, sometimes correctable, before the fetus is born. In other words, babies are surviving earlier and earlier in gestation. There is no scientific or clinical basis to say they're just a cluster of cells anymore. When the Roe versus Wade decision was made, even then, clinical and scientific reality was not taken into account. It was purely a legal decision made on the basis of women's rights of privacy. This is the 20th century, 21st century equivalent of the Dred Scott decision that basically decided that blacks were subhuman. By law in the Southern American states that was slavery, an Afro-American slave was, or an Afro-American was three-fifths human. That's what they said. So slave owners, plantation owners, could vote three-fifths of their slaves for the candidate of their choice. This was upheld by the Supreme Court, dehumanizing black people. Irrespective of the fact that even then, even in the 19th century, the scientific knowledge and the, certainly the anthropological knowledge that was existing then mitigated directly against this idea that blacks were subhuman, but the legal decision was made that way. Now they've done the same thing with fetuses. They have no scientific basis. Jane Roe, the alias of the person who supposedly bought the suit, and that was all engineered. She was basically used as a stooge the way the Scopes trial was with Darwinism. Jane Roe has become an open pro-life advocate who opposes abortion herself. The whole thing was a setup. You can get on an elevator in any obstetric hospital in the world, Queen Charlotte in London, being a main one. You can go to one floor, the neonatology ward, seventh floor. They'll be spending thousands of pounds, British pounds, thousands of dollars a day to save the life of one premature baby. Take the elevator two flights up, they will be aborting a fetus of the same fetal age or even younger. They no longer have a clinical or scientific definition between infanticide and elective abortion. Abortion is being used as a form of mere birth control. Not IUDs, not pills, not anything. Not male vasectomy. They're using abortion as a form of birth control. All under the name of choice. Women are usually not being told the longer-term medical consequences of elective abortion. And in fact, in medical colleges, people are taught that elective surgery, an invasive procedure where there's no medical warrant, is ill-advised. This is a dilemma for cosmetic surgery, but it's certainly a dilemma for obstetrics and gynecology. The Hebrew scriptures in the Torah of Moses make it clear that if you cause a pregnant woman to miscarry, the person who caused the 
confrontation resulting in her miscarriage is guilty of murder. John the Baptist, Yochanan Amadbil, in Hebrew, recognized Jesus from his mother's womb. Prenatal consciousness. Now this is supported by modern medical technology, by ultrasound. We know that babies respond to stimulus. They can feel pain before they are born. Yet people yell women's rights, and if you don't support it, you're involved in the war against women. But these same voices will oppose women being shown ultrasound pictures of their own baby mandatorily so a woman can make an informed medical decision. This is what you're reporting. No, don't show her that. She might not abort. Why? They obviously don't care about women's rights. Abortion is an industry. We have seen Planned Parenthood trafficking in human body parts, which is a felony, but it's not being prosecuted by the corrupt American government. Not at all. It's a lawlessness. It's debauchery. God tolerated much sin in Old Testament Israel. Much sin. Even idolatry, certainly social injustice of every description. But there's one sin he wouldn't tolerate. When they were sacrificing their babies to Moloch, when they were killing babies. His judgment became inevitable. And his judgment is inevitable today. The United States aborting 55 million fetuses approximately. That's the approximate equivalent of 15 states if demographically the population of the United States of 330 million thereabout was distributed equally among the 50, it would be the equivalent of about 15 states. Who are we to set ourselves up as God to determine who lives and who dies? Or to determine what is the quality of life for another person? We have no right. Not even a God-given right. We have no objective right based on scientific reality and the ethics that come from scientific objectivity. They will always argue you're forcing your Judeo-Christian values on us. No, I'm not. All I'm saying is look at the science. The fact that the science supports what the scripture says is your problem. And scientific reality is scientific reality. It's not choice. It's death. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless.